From the National Museum of African American Music in Nashville, Tennessee, this is Just Conversations, presented by the Metro Human Relations Commission. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Just Conversations on how the pandemic has affected people working in the food industry. I am here at the National Museum of African American Music with my two great panelists, Jackie Castro and Carla Ruiz. They are both owners of food businesses, and I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves, starting with Jackie. Hello, my name is Jackie Castro. Um, I have a small business called Golden Bakery, and I make cakes, desserts, and decorate parties or any special occasions. Thank you, and Carla? Hi, my name is Carla Ruiz. I'm the chef owner of Carla's Catering and Prepare Foods, and I have a catering company. Thank you both. So our topic today is how the pandemic has affected people working in the food industry, uh, immigrants in particular. So I wonder if you have any thoughts to share on that of what you've seen or, or of what you've experienced. And Carla, I know you had to make a pivot with your catering company when the pandemic started. So I'll start with you. Right. Um, well, like I think everybody in the food, in the food business um the first the first week we start panicking um and we start thinking because th that time you are already booked so many events mm -hmm. so when you have the first call from a cancellation it's okay but then two calls three calls four calls it was like a domino and it was very scary um in my case, uh, many friends of us, they have to close. They decide not to keep up, up, but in my case, I have no another choice. I have, that's the only way for me to provide. So I have to, there is no choice for me. So um, we just decide to, um, the first thing we did that was to email our friends and say, we're gonna do meals to go and you can pay me online you can pick up at the door and there is no contact so that just come that was the first thing we did obviously we all use masks and that was not like they they knock the door i have their food um outside and there was no contact at all so um that was okay for a little bit but then um, employees start getting scared. They don't, they decide not to work. And then, um, food ingredients start getting very, um, like not just the food, but also the, the containers for the food start getting, but that was happened in the first, because remember that was here in Nashville, that was the, it was in a, a hurricane and then oh, a yeah, week right you know, after was the pandemic. the pandemic and the city yeah. shutting down. So yes. exactly. So it was it was a little chaos. It was um, it was if probably the easiest way was to um, close the business. But I know there is no other way for me to provide. So I have no choice. So I decide I have to do whatever. And, you know, um, I have to say something. People from Nashville are always being so supportive, yeah. and so uh, they they always have your back. And they many clients call us, "How can I help? How can I help?" And I say, "Look, I'm gonna be cooking. Uh, if you wanna buy food from me, I can, um, you know, just have it here at the kitchen. I can even deliver it, but there is no contact. We all use my so you have to find a way to make it work. To make it work." There is no option A uh, or option B. There is, you just have to make it work. Yeah. That's no other choice. Necessity is the right. mother of invention. Exactly. So you had to reinvent. Exactly. But I love hearing that people were supportive oh, of you. Oh, people were very, and always, always, 
in Nashville, uh, people are always being very supportive. Yeah, yes. I felt that after the tornado yes. as well. Right. Yeah. And and Jackie, what was your experience with well, the pandemic? Well, it was it was kind of different uh, different from hers because uh, she does have you know food like actual food. For me, it's a treat. You know, it's sweets, cakes for parties. You yeah. know, uh, but I also had, you know, all these chairs and tables and decorations that I used to rent. You know, because um, people remember... could call you if they're having a party. Yeah, and get rent all their furniture from you, mm -hmm. as well as their cake, their beautiful cake. Okay. Yeah. So it was me, you know, having like parties booked and a whole schedule, you know, and the pandemic started and I was like, okay, you know, all the news were saying, you know, you have to wear a mask, you have to, you know, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer. And, you know, like I actually, you know, call people and email them. And I was like, you know what, these are the guidelines that we have to follow for your, you know, event or your party. And they were like, oh, okay. But then, you know, next day, news are like, no, you cannot have parties, more than 10 people. Right. And you know, you cannot say that to a wedding, mm -hmm, you know, exactly. like it's a whole event or a quinceanera, mm -hmm. it's a whole event. <laughs> so I started like, what am I gonna do? You know, I don't want to cancel them. But then they started calling and they were like, you know what, this happened, you know, we're gonna have to cancel, we're gonna have to reschedule. Oof. I was like, we can reschedule, you know, because what's gonna happen with the deposit? You know, if we cancel, right. I have to give the deposit back. Right. So you had already gotten deposits for events and then yeah. they were calling to say, do they want their deposit back? No, they didn't say that. They said that if some of them were like, we, we're gonna have to cancel. Uh, what's gonna happen with the deposit? And I was like, okay, you know, let me just, think of something, you know, uh, I know that this is unfortunate, but it's not my fault and it's not yours. So we negotiated and some of them, you know, like were like, okay, you know, I understand the whole situation. So I gave them half of the deposit and I kept half um, because they understood the situation. It's thank God. It's tricky because you, you it take a tricky. deposit for safety, but mm -hmm. it's not like you ever really want to keep it. Right. Right. Because that right. just creates bad blood. So that's, exactly. yeah, it's tricky. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, like some of the others were like, we want to reschedule, you know, I was like, okay, you know, we're going to reschedule, we're going to make it work. And two years later, we still in no a pandemic, a you know, wow. and it's like, what happened with that? I had to call them and I was like this, I, I am so sorry, you know, but I'm going to have to give you half of your deposit back because it's not fair for me to keep the whole thing when I don't know, you know, if you are still planning to have that party, you know, and they like some of them understood and I, some of them didn't. And I did have to give them, you know, the whole thing. And and that's rough when you have a small business. business. Right. right. Yeah, because really, really it's rough. different when you have a whole, you know, establishment or a whole, you know, business already established. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, mine is like local and small. Like, please let me make it work for you, you know, because yes. I'm looking for clients. I was, at that time, it was just like, you know, okay, I bought all this, you know, stuff to create your party and decorate it. Right. You invested. And I yeah. invested this whole thing. And then, you know, with the thought that, you know, I'm gonna make money out of it to, you know, like um, recover the, the investment. But all of this happens and it wasn't my fault. It wasn't their fault. And you know what? Here we are. So what, how did you, get yourself through this time with cakes only with and cakes sweets. only okay. and sweets i started making pies uh i started making cookies and i started to making like the the sweet kids that mm -hmm. i was uh telling her carla uh you know and i delivered them because you know they were in a pandemic some of them you know i need something for my kids i had to make you know all of this like a cool experience to get them through this so i was like okay you know what i know what to do you know if you want to entertain them 
right you know here is this like cookie kit that you know i'm gonna put icing and toppings and same with cupcakes and i can you know sell it like to you for ten dollars and you can entertain them and they were like okay that sounds cool that's a great idea so <laughs> i was awesome. like okay it is sound cool and they were like okay i want to i was like okay twenty dollars there yeah i was like twenty dollars <laughs> right. there okay good gas money okay so I'm gonna use those twenty dollars for gas, so I can deliver that, and I can start redoing my small business mm -hmm. again. Because when all the cancellations were like, you know, starting, I was like, okay, this is this is done. Wow. But I started thinking, and I was like, okay, you know, we're gonna do this and that, and I started posting more in my Instagram page because at that time I didn't use it a lot. It was mostly like business cards. Um. You know, they started calling and I started delivering them because they were in quarantine. They didn't want to right. get out. I was like, okay, mask on, gloves on, Lysol. Yeah, <laughs> and right, I, right. And I put them, you know, on the front door and I was like, okay, if you don't have cash app or Venmo or anything like this, you can put the money under your mat and I'll get it from there. So they did, some of them, you know, paid like online, that was cool too. And I started going, I started making more like breads, like cornbread or banana nut bread or... Not, not stuff. stuff you grew up maybe making in, in <laughs> right. Mexico. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, and I remember... Uh, outside your comfort zone. Yeah, and I remember my grandma and my aunt and my mom, and my mom, when my dad passed away, she started doing the same thing because she needed money. You know, she had to make it work. Right. And I remember I was like, okay, if they, they're not having parties, they're not asking for cakes, you know, you do it, coffee, right. you know, with a piece of bread. Right. So I started making that and I called my grandma and I was like, grandma, <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> I was like, I need re the recipe for a cornbread. And she gave it to me and I was like, okay, I'm going to make that and I'm going to offer it. It was just one cornbread that I sold and I, I remember i remember i was kind of like frustrated because i bought you know like a lot of stuff so you invested yeah. in a storeroom of corn and meal. i was like okay that wasn't very popular and then i was like okay banana nut bread or banana bread because you had I to learned, reinvent allergies. you had to reinvent yeah. I, the, I think this brings us to a really good point which is that it's really close to the bone if you have a small business, yeah. probably especially if you're an immigrant. Exactly. And I'm wondering, you know, everyone started applying for unemployment and assistance. Were those resources available to no. you? No. Okay, no. so that puts no. you in kind of a completely different totally. position. And we, they you were- You had to scramble. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They didn't know available to us. And uh, if they were, they were for friends of mine, um, there are, immigrants and they can apply they were very more complicated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. very they were complicated, complicated. If you exactly immigrants. exactly yeah. so you know we don't want to spend three four hours in the computer try to figure out we just want to make it happen so we just move in and we just we just have to work it. it's like just do what we do but with a little click of different things or whatever with, but, with but, a little uh twist twist and yes. for me it was different because like some of you know like people you know i know they have kids and they got help because of the kids mm -hmm. but i don't have kids i only have my dog and siblings <laughs> and they are immigrants as well and my mom and it was just me and my mom trying to you know make it work because you know i was the only help that my mom had right so i had to think about like you know stuff to do because at that time I, I was working at a uh, phone store but they closed for like two months right. <laughs> and I was like wow. okay I'm not gonna get paid from there and you know restaurants I couldn't go back to restaurants because they were also closed mm -hmm. so I started doing all of that and you know thank god that my mom my mom's uh, job it's kind of like different and she did you know uh, she didn't you know, got her hours cut and all of that. So we did have her income, but it wasn't it, enough. it wasn't enough for the whole thing. You so know? you you really had to help. Mm -hmm. It's very I really did have to step step up. That's very important because 
my mom is my right right hand and so am I for her so yeah you did what you had to do yeah now both of you have really interesting stories um, I would like to hear a little bit about how you got to where you are now because Carla you have a pretty successful well-known catering company in Nashville thank you <laughs> but you created this from scratch so can you That's tell us right. a little bit about your journey how this started it was um, it is funny I used to work um, for Martha Stamps at the Bell Mead Plantation who is Martha Stamps Ooh. is this someone we should all know at the Bell Mead Plantation yes um, I don't know who she is. Okay, Martha Stamps is a great, great, very creative chef. She's a chef. Okay. She's a chef, yes. And she used to have a restaurant in Bell Mead Plantation. Okay. Um, mostly Southern food. And um, I remember that at Bell Mead they were, um, we have a program, a small program where they plant uh, squash and jalapenos by then. <laughs> and stuff like a little that, diversity. Exa exactly. So it was for me. So, but then they throw away the squash blossom. They just took the squashes, and I was like, "Oh my god, that is beautiful for empanadas." That's how oh, it all okay. started. Oh, what's That's what's the word for squash blossom in Spanish? Uh, flor de calabaza. Flor de calabaza. It's okay. just yeah. Even my logo have the squash blossom because that. And I remember that I start making empanadas with that for a special. And they always was like a sellout. Like, I mean, I, we have some comments for people who say like, this is looking a little too, I remember that comment. It was like. A little too. too what did they say? Like. Too authentic? <laughs> maybe they tried to say, this is not our food. This is not our, and I remember that comment. It was an ugly comment about the food that I was presenting as a special because that was more like enchiladas. Um, I do cheese grits and all that, but sometimes it's for a special, you want to do something different. I didn't know yet the concept of bell meat um, food and all that. So I just do a specials. Right. And it was a traditional southern menu. Exactly. And, you were throwing in a and little I was throwing there. Sabor. So Marta gave me the opportunity to do a lot of um, like Thursday night. We do like like dinners and I do that only Mexican, but very authentic Mexican. And we always sold out. People come back and come back for the food. And, you know, um, I have a friend there who told me you should do this. Like Marta, even she pushed me to do this in my own. And that's how I start working for her. But at the same time, having my uh, it took forever, but having in my spare time uh, small events. But it was not like it was not like chips and nachos and burritos. It was authentic, like cochinita pibil. Um, so what is cochinita pibil? It's a Mexi I would call it Mexican style barbecue pork. Okay, but it's, you got excited you know, when you heard that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they know, right? Or uh, chiles en hogada, which um, Jennifer Justice, she have a book, Nashville Eats. Jennifer and, Justice, yes, the national food yes. writer. And one of my recipes of the chiles and nogada is in her book, which that's amazing. Uh, so I start doing food that nobody knows that was Mexican because Mexican food is, is amazing. It's not what we eat here in, you know, it's not chimichangas and it's not, I'm sorry, but it's not. And so it start getting there. And then I start selling my empanadas, tamales, at the um, um, Richland Farmer's Market. At the Richland Farmer's Market. Yes. Such a great farmer's market. Yeah, I love it, when yeah. they just started. And that's how I was working there at Fido. I was working uh, in my company and then doing the empanadas and tamales on Saturdays. And that's how I provide for my son and my daughter. So, you, you know, busy. I mean, You're it raising, was- raising, what, it, you have two, two kids? Two kids. One was about to get in college. The other one was six years old. So yeah, a little difference there. Um, and that's how I provide for them. But people always been so nice. Um, I have events, uh, people come to the farmer's market, they, they eat the empanadas and then, let me tell you a couple of experiences that are, thing is funny. Somebody hired me to do a wedding and the best man of the wedding was John Stemos. John Stemos. Oh, John Stemos. And I don't know who he was. 
And he was eating my empanadas before the wedding started. And I started <laughs> fighting with him. Hey, you, you cannot do that. <laughs> you cannot do that. This is my food and it's not ready to go. Yeah, it was it stories like that all the time. Um, I cater for the opening um, CD for um, a lot of country stars. That, but I don't know how they find me. And that's how I start going little by little. Oh, and the pandemic story. totally changed the way uh, because I do right now more like packaging foods uh, for organizations like the World Central Kitchen or Rethink. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not Those like... Two organizations that are helping people that need food get correct, free food. Correct, yeah. correct. And I love that. I mm -hmm. love doing that. Um, the events are a little more, it's different. It's, uh, you know, a lot of cre creativity, a lot of, I mean, you every... To express yourself. E exactly. But we only have a few minutes left, so I want to okay. get to Jackie's Just please story. do, Wait, please do, please I do. I could talk with you all for <laughs> hours. But Jackie, you kind of have a new company. You're, yeah, you're, this is, I'm you're pretty starting. recent to this. Yeah. And you were telling us you're, you're quite young. Yeah. I'm Very 22 young. years old and, um, uh, I grew up, you know, like seeing my grandma and my, um, aunt and my mom baking, you know, to make mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. just to buy the tortillas or just to, you know, like put gas in like their cars or, you know, but when I got here i was a freshman in high school and i was like i i love baking i love cooking in general but baking is my you know comfort zone and you make uh, beautiful specialty cakes yeah that's kind I, of your personalized them. passion yeah your passion so how are people learning about you i think you were mentioning how one lady wanted a special cake for yeah. her grandchild's birthday yeah i remember that and you know like the story, like it's it's a funny story because you know, like I live in Franklin in Williamson County, and you know the immigrant community is like tiny, tiny. small. <laughs> um, and you know what? Like I was handling, you know, some business cards. I was in downtown, like downtown Franklin, and I was walking. And you know what? Like if you were passing like next to me, I was like, oh, you know, I I have a business, and you know, people were like, oh, okay, and. It was just like, okay, you know, whatever. I take the car, but whatever. Yeah, nothing. And I saw this lady, this old lady, <laughs> and she had her dog with her. She was walking her dog. And I was like, oh my God, such a cute dog or whatever. And I started petting him. And, you know, we started talking. And I was like, oh, you know what? You know, like I have my uh, small business in case that you need anything. I make pies and I make cupcakes and cookies and cakes. And she was like, oh, honey, I have a cake. I was like, okay. So she showed me a picture and she kind of took forever because she was trying to find it. And she was just <laughs> like, okay, let me see. And she started looking for it. And I was like, okay. So she showed me this uh, princess cake. And she was like, I want this for my granddaughter. I was like, okay. And she was like, can you make this? I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> and um, so a perfect stranger took you up. And yeah. on your offer of making a special tea cake, yeah, which is pretty funny. interesting because you're like, right. here I am. You don't know me. I'm an immigrant in a place where there's not that many right. immigrants. <laughs> right. I have an accent. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and at that time I wasn't 22. I was like 17, 18. Wow. wow. So she was like, if you can make this, you know, I totally like pay you. I was like, okay. So, you know, we started talking. So the point is that, you know, I delivered the cake because she couldn't drive. And I was like, okay, I can deliver it to you. So I did, um, I got there and it was a small party and I was kind of like, okay, I thought it was gonna be bigger because in a Hispanic culture, like birthday parties are a big deal. <laughs> uh, so I got there and all the kids were like, oh my God. And it was so just, exciting. it wasn't it was a, a big success. cake. It mm -hmm. was just like a small cake, a small cute cake. And you know, they looked at it and from there, you know, with all the moms and the kids, you know, with the cake and they said like, oh, it's delicious and all that. Okay. And they, they even gave me some pizza. But you got a bunch of new clients because it was a success. I yeah. love this. I love, I love this. Yeah. So we are almost out of time, ladies. I'm so sad to say, but I want to make sure people know 
how to find you and your businesses. So can you tell everyone the name of your business and where they can find you? Yeah, my business, uh, Carla's Catering and Prepare Foods. Um, you can look at me at my Instagram, Instagram Carla, Carla. Um, Catering. Carla Catering. Jackie, can you tell people where to find your business, which is Golden Bakery? Golden Bakery in um, Instagram, and the, my logo, it's all black with Golden Bakery in um, gold letters. Um, and uh, at Turk, because I volunteer, I'm a, mem I'm also a member. Also at the Tennessee Immigrant and, and Refugee Rights, Rights Coalition. Coalition. Yeah, and they all know me and they have my info, so if you go there and you ask for me, they're gonna give you my info. Uh, and yeah, that's yes. how you, that's how everybody can find me. Great, Instagram and yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition is an amazing nonprofit that helps immigrants, refugees, right. with all kinds of assistance, advocacy work, everything. Right. So, ladies, it's been a pure joy talking same with both here. of you. Yeah, same. I have to wrap it up, but um, I want to thank you for a great conversation thank today. You. And I want to thank the National Museum of African American Music for hosting us. And I hope you will tune in and watch our episode of Just Conversations at www.justconversations.org, along with all the other great episodes that are on there. Thank you.